Hi everybody, Lori Marie here, mixed media artist in Vallejo, California. Uh, you know these videos, you watch them for about 20 minutes and they take me all day to do them because I've got this to do and that to do. And then there's that to do and this to do and walk the dog and do the laundry and do the dishes and today I taught a couple of altered book classes. So um, I finished our um, Go Big or Go Home Rose Fabric mosaic piece that I started at dark o'clock this morning so I'm pretty proud of that and uh, it's dark outside now <laughs> from dark o'clock in the morning to dark o'clock at night we are crazy so there it is it's gorgeous it's really a fun piece I'll hold it that way and you can see the whole thing <laughs> a rose on its side so, uh, like the channel, don't like the channel, leave a comment, YouTube counts all of those, so I appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed, please do, that's another thing that YouTube really likes, and I think they're getting used to me saying underpants, so that's really good. So thanks so much for joining me, uh, I hope you have fun with this video, I certainly did. Part 2, Go Big or Go Home, Rose, Fabric, Mosaic see on the table. All right, you know it's dark o'clock. Couldn't wait to get out of bed and start the background for this. So let's go through the supplies. The piece of paper that I have, you can use watercolor paper. I just happen to have a handcrafted paper. Uh, it's about 16 by 20. Any paper will work as long as it's large enough to hold your go big or go home rows. You'll need your Mod Podge and a brush. Pamela asked how I like my brush. I like it a lot. You'll need a gift card, your Stabilo, of course, some scissors, a stencil, black gesso, white gesso. I have three colors of acrylic, cheap acrylic paint. Um, I'll probably just use two but who knows, maybe I'll use all three. A uh, little water sprayer. Some um, ephemera, some underpants for the first layer. And uh, these are just book pages, music pages, anything like that that you can use for the background. Background number one. And then I have a bunch of old pictures I probably got out of a history book of some sort. And I'm going to use those as the second layer of underpants on the piece, second layer of the background. Did we cover? Oh, and a toothbrush. I think I'll be using a toothbrush later on. So let's get started. Uh, we are going to put down the first layer of underpants first. And so I'm going to tear these into bits and pieces and just start gluing them onto the handcrafted paper. And uh, let me get these wrapped. Since this is a bigger piece of paper, you can get away with bigger pieces of old book pages uh, for your underpants. They don't have to be real small. And I have this sheet going this way, and it actually, well, it'll fit on my desk this way, but it would be this way for the piece, okay? So I'm going to make sure that I pay attention to that when I'm gluing my pieces down. And I'm sure you've seen me glue these underpants down before, but I just use my Mod Podge. Generously put it down on this gorgeous paper. just start placing things. I've removed a lot of the white edges because I don't care for a lot of the white pieces on my background. And I line mine up as silly as that is. You'd think that with all my messiness in my art that I would put them down more sporadically, but I don't. They're in a line. So if you can put yours down this way, 
my hat's off to you. I look at those pieces, I love those pieces, and then I go to make a piece, and mine are quite lined up. So you just never know. All right, go ahead and glue down all of your underpants, and then we will come back and look at what's next. All right, this is how it's looking. Just Mod Podge, old pages, old maps, old dictionaries, whatever you have. I got a comment from one of you that you wanted to see the whole process. <clears throat> that tickles me because I don't even want to see the whole process of this. It's just grabbing old book pages and gluing them down with Mod Podge. Nothing fancy, believe me. So I'm just going to continue down this sheet. We're almost done here. And then uh, we're going to add some color. All right, I have all my underpants on, my first layer. And, uh, oh, it looks great. These are pieces of tissue paper that could not stand on their own, so I just uh, glued them on. They were on the top of my desk. So I just put them on. It's gorgeous. All right, let's play with some paint. These are the three choices that I chose, keeping in mind the color of my... the rose that I'm putting on. Isn't that fun? So, oh my goodness. I always go with the blue. Going with the blue for the first layer. That's all there is to that. And my credit card, which I had in my hand a moment ago. And some water. All right, this is the top of the piece. Here again, I'm working this way because it's a big piece. And I'm just going to put some blue paint on here. Very systematically, as you can see. My water sprayer is always a little pistol, so I'm just going to go through here and spray some water. You guys want to see the process? Here it is, my slow little <laughs> spray bottle. Now my Mod Podge is not dry. I don't care. That's okay. And my coffee's not done yet either, so I might be sipping on that as we go. All right. And I'm just going to drag that color through that sheet. Beautiful. take my handy dandy heat gun and I'm going to dry this so that we can continue on together this morning. Lots to do before the sun comes up, right? Beautiful. See, you can still see your underpants. Not to worry. Alright, that layer is all dry. What I'm going to do next is I've got this pile of semi-interesting pictures. So I'm going to use those as another layer on this piece. They're not really interesting enough to stand on their own, but I don't have the heart to toss them out either. Like I say, I think they were out of some kind of a historian book that was given to me, and I just went through and things out. So I have a pile of them that I'm going to dig through and just uh, go through the piece and glue them down with my Mod Podge. I will Mod Podge on top of them as well. Alright, I have most of these glued down. Since we're working on a big piece and it is a handcrafted paper, 
it's going to have quite an organic lumpiness to it, which I adore. So keep that in mind before you start. See all these wrinkles? and I love them. And you're just going to get it in a piece like this. You're just going to get it. Is there one more piece here that I can glue on? Maybe you? Oh, you got a nice ragged edge. Let's just use you. And then I don't care if the Mod Podge is still wet. I am going to grab my next color, which I'm going to go with the yellow. Mod Podge hands. Love to peel them. Oh, well, there we go. And the stubborn water sprayer. gift card. Do you ever lose things on your desk? We're going to grab another one. All right, and I'm just going to smush, smush, smush around. this way of layering the paint. You can see the underneath layer. This is why we don't use valuable pictures on the underpants, right? <laughs> Where did they go? All right, I'm going to let this dry and then we'll come back and have some more fun. All right, we've got some nice energy going on here. Love it. I went to the kitchen and I got a lid uh, because I want to bring some pink through the piece. So I'm just going to put some pink paint on there. And then I'm going to just drag my gift card through that. And then I'm just going to add some lines to the piece. Energy going like that, bring that pink in. Very organic, no big plans. paper towel and just smooth out some of these edges. Each layer that we're working on adds more energy to the background of these pieces. I probably spend more time on the backgrounds than I do on the focal points. All right, let's grab a paper towel. Let's just get rid of the harsh edges on those. And what that's done for my eye is that has gotten the piece ready for the pink and red rose that's going on here. All right, next we are going to grab the black gesso. 
make sure there's a little bit in the lid because that's what we're going to be using. And our toothbrush. So I want to make sure there's some moisture on my tooth toothbrush, but it doesn't have to be too much. But it does need some. And I'm going to stir my toothbrush into that black gesso. And then I'm just going to start splattering black. We'll deal with that the blobs in a minute. The blobs are very welcome. So more and more and more interest in that background. deal with those blobs. I think so. Beautiful. Looks like a big hot mess, doesn't it? Love it. I'm going to dry this and then we will bring our rows over and see how we've done. All right, let's just do a little recap because we've done an awful lot for this background. So let's walk through it again. So I started off with a handcrafted paper. You can use a watercolor paper or anything, mixed media paper, anything that's a little bit stiff. I have some bumps going on in my cardboard underneath, so the piece looks even bumpier than it is. Anyway, then I uh, glued down the first layer of underpants, which was uh, the book pages and the map pages and the musical notes. Anything that you can see in the background. After that dried, well, I didn't actually let it dry. I put down turquoise paint, blobs of turquoise paint and water. And I just took my gift card and I just smushed it through the whole piece. We'll use our technical terms today. I did let that dry. And then I put down some pictures that don't have a lot of interest, but yet they have some movement in them. Then I took my second color, which is the yellow. And I put that around with the water and I smushed that around. After that dried, I brought my white gesso and a stencil in, and I just added some energy in some spots. Let that dry. Then I took uh, pink paint, pink acrylic paint, put it in a lid. With my credit card, I just made some lines, softened those edges with a paper towel. Then I brought in my black gesso and a toothbrush, and I splattered. And where it left blobs, I just dragged the blobs for interest. All right, so that's a recap. So let's see how our rose is going to look on here. <laughs> yep. This is going to be great. And our little leaves. I don't know how many we'll use, but have some fun leaves. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn these pieces over, apply Mod Podge onto the back of them, and then glue them down on the piece. I'll start off with the stem. I do like um, a space between the stem and the flower. Here again, this is the top, but since 
since the piece is so big, I'm having to work horizontally for you and for me because my desk isn't quite that big and my camera space isn't quite that big. So I'll put some Mod Podge on the back of that stem that has those lovely thorns on it. Turn that over. You're not quite to the bottom. And then I will press that down. Lovely thorns there. All right, just push that down the best that you can. And continue on with your rows and a few of your leaves. While I'm putting Mod Podge on the back of this rose, I just want to do a little shout out thank you to Michael for the light that we get to use at Dark O'Clock. Thank you, Michael. She said that uh, I brighten her day, and I told her that she brightens ours. She makes it possible for us to play before the sun comes up, that's for sure. All right, I'm gonna continue putting down Mod Podge, flip this over, and put it, press it down. The best way I know to secure that down is to put a paper towel over your rose and your Mod Podge. There's no Mod Podge on the top of this rose, just on the underneath side. And so I put a paper towel down and I just really put some pressure on there to get that rose to stick down. And it's probably taken on a little bit of its own organic, whoop, organic shape there. Then I can just go around the edges, make sure everything is stuck down. All my edges are stuck down fairly well. Can you see our strings? They're so fun. Love those strings. I am going to take this to the sewing machine after it's dry, so I'm not uber particular about the edges because so I'm going to catch it with the machine. I don't mind if it lifts a little bit, but these are stuck down pretty, pretty well. All right, let's grab our leaves. See how I have a little bit of space between the stem and the rows? I kind of like that. All right, I am going to put two leaves on one side and one leaf on the other side, something like that. So I'll just put some Mod Podge on the back of that leaf. Put my Mod Podge brush on my coffee cup. It's always a good idea. And stick that leaf down. And I will do that to the other two leaves. They're gorgeous. Our final leaf is down. I'll go through with my paper towel, make sure that all edges are stuck down. Now, after this dries, I'm gonna take it to my sewing machine. You do not have to do that step if you are not comfortable with that. I just have to tell you, I have a cheapy brother machine. It cost me, oh, I don't know how long I've had it, but it cost me probably $129 when I bought it. Nothing special at all. It will sew through this just fine. I use my sewing machine for a lot of paper sewing. And you know how thick this is now, and my machine will still go through it. So try it if you want. Don't try it if you want. <laughs> and we will come back after I get this all stitched. I can't keep my hands off it. It's like, oh, so fun. All right, it's going to be a minute. I need for this to dry thoroughly so that I can sew it. Okay, I have my piece all stitched. I just went in with a gold thread and just did a straight stitch. Call it kind of wonky in some places, and I'm okay with that. So what I'm going to do next is just go in with the Jane Davenport um, watercolor brush. 
<clears throat> pardon me, and give this a little bit of definition along the edge. I will still use the stabilo, but the stabilo doesn't go up on the fabric so well, and I do want the edge of the flower to stick out a little bit, pop out a little bit. So I'm just going along that edge with that watercolor brush to just kind of ex um, accent the edge. So I'm going to go around the whole flower and the leaves and the inside of the flower with this Jane Davenport watercolor brush. I just chose a brown. So I just want to show you the difference between the low-lighted one with the watercolor brush and the non-low-lighted one. Strings, love strings. So I like the way that the, uh, the watercolor edging pops it out. So I'm just going to continue with that. Like I say, I'm going to do the, the rose and the leaves. I think the stem is dark enough that it's fine. So just to show you on the leaves, just go around the edge. Give it a little smudge. And it just brings that out. In my eye, anyway, it just brings it out a little bit more. Okay, I believe I've hit all of the lighter edges with the watercolor paint. Give that a little bit of low lighting. And now I'm going to go in with my Stabilo and do the rest of the shadowing on the piece. And I will just go around the entire rose and the stem and the leaves, applying the Stabilo a little bit of moisture, not much, just a little bit, and then smudge it. This is where I enjoy the fact that they didn't unite. get the idea. I'm going to go around the leaf a little bit, show you how that looks. Lovely. Oh my goodness, I love the smoky finish of a Stabilo. Yes, I do. And then I will go around, yes, the entire rose inside and outside. It's like, well, why did she put that watercolor on the edge of the rose? <clears throat> because the Stabilo does not crawl up that fabric very well. So I wanted that edge to have a little bit of a darkness as well. And the Stabilo won't do that. All right, see the difference? Oh, yum, yum, yummy. I will go around the edges of the piece as well. So the stem, the leaves, the rows, and the edge of your piece. A little bit of moisture. Give it a nice smoky finish. The day is nearly done here. I taught a couple of altered book classes today. Now I want to come back here and finish this piece with you. I'm just bringing you back in for the final touches of the Stabilo. I did most of the rows already. I did the edges of the piece. Now I'm just finishing up the spiral of the rows. Then we will have part two. Uh, go big or go home, rose, fabric, mosaic. I'll show this in the intro, I'm sure, since I do the piece before the intro so that I can show you the piece on the intro so you have some idea of what you're doing or what I'm doing. Also, 
some of us have an idea of what I'm doing. Pretty darn fun. There's the rose. There's the stem with the thorns and the leaves. Pretty cool. Alright, go play. Go create, go play, go have fun.